When I open a database, one of the first things I do is look at the relationships diagram. This is a mess. There's lots wrong with this database. Let's fix it. And we'll start with the relationships diagram. Hi, this is Crystal. You can create your own database using Northwind by specifying the Northwind template when you make a new database. I've already downloaded Northwind, so it shows up here. But in case you don't see it, go to More Templates, type Northwind in the Search for Online Templates box, then click the magnifying glass to do the search. Then you will see Northwind in your tray to pick from. Once Northwind is chosen, click the Browse icon to specify where the file should go and what it should be called. Click OK to accept your path and name, and then click the big Create button. When Northwind opens, there's a login form. Let's just close that. We want to look at the Relationships diagram and clearly see all the objects. The navigation pane shows a customized view. I prefer to see it by object type. From the right-click menu at the top of the navigation pane, choose Category Object Type. Now we see objects in buckets of tables, queries, forms, reports, macros, and modules. Expand the table names. Open the Relationships window. I'm using my Quick Access Toolbar, but you'll probably have to get there from the Database Tools ribbon tab. This doesn't look useful at all, but it can be. Northwind Traders is a fictitious company invented by Microsoft to demonstrate features of Access. It's not, currently, a professional quality database design. Maybe that can change. To see what data is being tracked is to see what's really going on. Let's rearrange the relationships diagram and find out what it can tell us. Here are two of the four rules I use to rearrange, reposition, and resize. One, stretch or shrink field lists to show names. Two, position the one table on the left and the many table on the right. Those are the basics, so let's get started. Collapse the navigation pane so we've got more screen space for the diagram. The two main resources of this company are its employees and its products. Everything that's tracked is because of these two resources. The diagram flows from left to right. These names shouldn't have spaces. And they can get pretty long, too. Privileges goes to the left of employee privileges. And anyway, privileges is a reserved word. This is Alan Brown's site and his reserved word page, which I have bookmarked because I go there all the time and look stuff up. It's got over 2,500 words on it. It's the most comprehensive list and most easy to use of reserved words that there is. Orders has a lot of foreign keys, so let's put it more to the right. For the converse reason, suppliers can go more to the left. Order details needs to be to the right of orders, since you have to have an order before you can have its detail. Customers are pretty important too, and they're also people, so we'll put them over here between employees and suppliers. 
anything to do with orders goes closer to the orders table. Products is going down. These four tables track different types of people, where a people is a human or a company. What's wrong with this design? Each of these tables has the exact same structure down to the field names. Even the primary key field, that's just wrong. Every field should have a unique name, unless it's a key field, meaning a primary key or a foreign key. But the primary key shouldn't be called ID in all the tables. It should be supplier ID or customer ID, some kind of ID. ID all by itself is ambiguous. And Having these fields named ID in all these tables, and they don't relate, can create another issue, which we're going to see later on. But it shouldn't just be ID in all the tables. There should be a supplier ID, a customer ID, and it should be named that way when it's the primary key. The fields in these tables have the exact same names. And that's not a good thing to do. Let's close up three of the field lists with redundant data structures. The products table, like each of the people tables, has an attachment field. I think it's better to keep attachments as external files instead of storing them in the database. Keeping attachments as external files gives them a lot more flexibility and doesn't bog down the database with a bunch of information that probably isn't going to change once you put it there. Or if it does need to change, it'll be a lot easier to change it. More rearranging. I just move the field lists around, putting the one side of the relationship on the left and the many side on the right until I can see everything. Stretch things out and get a feel for how the data flows. I can even rearrange a relationships diagram that's not in English because I'm not looking much at the names except to comment on them. I'm looking at the link lines. Let's save this so far. We can get even more space for the diagram by having overlapping windows for the current database instead of tabbed view. While here, let's check the name autocorrect options. Ah, it's on. Let's change that. Uncheck perform name autocorrect, then compact and repair the database. Go back to Current Database Options and uncheck Track Name Autocorrect Info and Compact again. Normally, you want to make sure you back up a database before compacting, since that can be a volatile process. But all we've done since this template was downloaded is rearrange the Relationships Diagram. And it would be a good idea to take a screenshot and save it so you can, you know, remember your work. Now we'll go back to the relationships. Maximizing it gives us just a little bit more vertical space. I can also combine my quick access toolbar with the title bar, which is how access shows it when it installs. But I add so much <laughs> that I like to show the QAT below the ribbon so I can see more of my icons, and I usually keep the ribbon collapsed. But right now, I want more space, so up to the title bar it goes, above the ribbon. Now, to tighten everything up, some of these names are really long. What is the maximum number of characters for a name? Guess what the maximum that's been used in Northwind is? 
Inventory transaction types is the longest table name, and it's 27 characters. The longest field name is transaction modified date, which is 25 characters. So, in case you're wondering, the maximum number of characters allowed in a name is 64. I think 25 characters is way too long. Names should be concise yet descriptive. Customers, suppliers, shippers, all have the same data structure as employees, but otherwise all the field lists are sized to see everything. Now we can get a better idea about what's going on. There are products that get sold to customers using an order. Then invoices are generated, products are shipped, and payments are made. This structure isn't very good, so keep that in mind if you use it for your business. It should be modified, but it's a good basic idea and a good place to start. Where start is the operative word. When you see a one on a link line, on the end of the link line, that looks like a double one, that means the link line has a backward slope. So we just need to reposition the field list until the slope is forward. The one one goes back to a one. The reason these link lines are labeled with the one and the infinity symbol is because referential integrity is enforced on the relationships. That means this box is checked when you look at the relationship details. There's another basic rule I like to follow when I rearrange the relationships diagram. Number three, put key fields at the top of field lists, generally. And generally, put them in whatever order minimizes the line crossings. In order details, status ID can move up to just under the product ID. In the inventory transactions table, the purchase order ID needs to be the first foreign key. Then we'll move the other foreign keys up too. To move a field, click on the row selector, then click on the selection, drag and drop. In this table, transaction type is a foreign key and stores a number, even though it doesn't end in ID. I like to name long integer key fields with ID on the end. The text for the numbers could be purchased, sold, on hand, or waste. This seems more like a status than a type to me. Customer order ID can go under purchase order ID. Transaction type can go below product ID. The diagram is getting better. Let's see what else we can do to make the lines more clear. In the orders table, shipper ID needs to move up. Move the shippers table. Inventory transactions can move down and over. In the purchase order details table, product ID can go up. That will eliminate another line crossing. The products table has a multi-value field, not because it's a good idea here, but to show the access can do it. Instead of that, I think in most cases, it's better to make a cross-reference table. See supplier IDs? Instead of a related table that acts as a cross-reference between suppliers and products, supplier IDs was changed to a multi-value field. These can be hard to work with, and they don't directly convert to SQL Server. One of the things that the templates do is showcase the features of Access, not build the best databases. The templates are good for ideas. 
Since suppliers really should relate to products using a cross-reference table, suppliers can go to the left. The cross-reference table could go somewhere in this area. Now we can get a pretty good idea of what this database keeps track of. The two main resources of the company are employees and products. They're on the left. That's where everything starts. Northwind Traders gets its products from suppliers using purchase orders with a details table for each product and its quantity. At the end of the day, or when an order is being placed to a supplier, inventory transaction records can be created from the customer orders. The inventory transactions table then becomes the detail table for purchase orders to suppliers. The orders table keeps track of the customer, order date, who will ship it, and where it will be shipped to. The order details table lists each product, quantity, and price. The relationships diagram, when it's laid out well, gives us a great way to see what's going on. Let's save the relationships diagram and look at some data. The products table shows what Northwind sells. Spices, seasonings, syrups and spreads, coffee, dried apples, rice, and so on. Each product has a category. We can make a totals query on the products table and count how many products are in each category. Category is defined as a lookup field where the row source type is a value list. The list is in the row source property. This isn't a good way to structure the information. Category should have its own table. In products, it should be a foreign key. The products table also has something else that might be a problem and degrades performance. It has a sub-data sheet. That means that whenever the products table is opened, so is the sub-data sheet table, whether it shows anything or not, and whether you even want to look at it or not. When you click the plus symbol, you see information from suppliers which also has a subdata sheet linked to purchase orders, which also has a subdata sheet linking to the products table. Hmm, interesting. Back where we started. The reason why you get poor performance with subdata sheets and might get the too many databases open error or an error that system resources are exceeded is look at how many tables get opened when products is opening, including another copy of itself. Subdata sheets might seem convenient in data sheet view like this, but subdata sheets should be removed when forms are built. Even though forms don't use the tables in the subdata sheets that way, they still get opened up. This could go on and on. So then number four is show all tables on the diagram. Are they all there? Let's compare. Customers, employee privileges, employees, inventory transaction types, inventory transactions, invoices, order details, order details status, orders, orders status, orders tax status, privileges, products, purchase order details, purchase order status, purchase orders, sales reports, shippers, strings, suppliers. What's missing? Everything should go on the relationships diagram. The diagram isn't perfect. But it's a lot better than it was, so I'm going to take a screenshot of it. It can be a challenge to get the right selection. Ha <laughs> that's it. I like to change the background to white, so when it's printed, 
what I write will show up better. Save it. Now that the file is out there, I can print it and carry it around. Look at it while waiting for the bus or in the checkout line at the grocery store. Now that it's a file, I can open it on my other monitor when I'm not looking at it in Access. So, what tables were missing? Sales reports and strings. Let's scroll to the right and put them on. Resize them. Collapse the navigation pane. They don't fit on the screen. Can we tighten things up even more? It would be easier if the names weren't so long. We'll just scoot them over a little. You can't see the whole table, but you can see that tables are there. These two new tables aren't on our screenshot, but they will be next time. The relationships diagram was step one. We still have a lot to do. Next, we'll fix names. Tom Van Stiffout wrote code to remove spaces and funny characters of names in Northwind. That's a good start. So we'll get his code and run it. The link to Tom's presentation is in the video description. It's about time someone tackled Northwind. Perhaps when we're done, it will be good enough to replace the actual Northwind template. When you're looking for code and information, visit msaccessgurus.com. And if you want to connect and team build your application, I'd love to work with you on the rough spots and to ensure the foundation is good. Email me. Thanks for joining me. Through sharing, we'll all get better.